while the bulls regained short-term momentum with gains on Friday, April 19th. Technical damage that occurred earlier in the week leaves stocks in a vulnerable position. In this week's video, we'll review some signs that the NASDAQ's intermediate term trend may be rolling over. We'll look at support and resistance for the S&P 500. From a vulnerability standpoint, we've got similarities or similar setups that we saw prior to corrections in 2010, 2011, and 2012. The charts we'll review will include the S&P 500 weekly, longs versus shorts on a weekly basis, and risk on versus risk off, or stocks versus bonds weekly. The moral of the story is if the market's character is similar to 2010 through 2012, the market remains vulnerable. If the market's character is on the verge of changing, it's possible that the bulls regain control. At this point, we'll give the bears the benefit of the doubt from a vulnerability perspective until the charts improve again. In this video, we will also review the stock versus VIX weekly chart that we've looked at several times over the past few weeks and months. We'll look at some vulnerabilities on the charts of small caps and material stocks as well. One of the best ways to sum up the current market's profile may be to look at the CCM market risk model. The market risk model is on a scale of 0 to 100. When it's at 100, it tells you that 100% of the answers are bullish. When it's at 50, it tells you that 50% of the answers to the questions in the model are bullish and 50% of them are bearish. So as you might surmise, a score of 50 on the market risk model tells you you have somewhat of a mixed outlook from a bullish and bearish perspective. The scores for the last three days, this is last Wednesday, last Thursday, and last Friday, are 62, 56, and 60. What that tells you is, is the bulls, or the majority of the answers to the questions from a percentage perspective, are still bullish. But we're getting very, very close to dropping below 50. If we drop below 50 next week, that would be a good sign for the stock market bears. To view the video in full screen mode, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. To improve the clarity of the charts, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. This is a daily chart of the NASDAQ composite or tech stocks. See here in late 2012 when the 50 day moving average, the blue line here flattened out, weakness followed. Typically, this is telling you that the intermediate term trend is neutral to weak here. Price fell after that. You can see we've got a 50 day moving average flattening out again. So, this point here is similar to this point here where weakness followed. Also note earlier last week, the NASDAQ basically fell to the same point it was all the way back to January 23rd earlier this year in 2013, telling us that the upside momentum for tech stocks is waning. This is a daily chart of the S&P 500 index, somewhat of a mixed bag here. Here's your 50-day moving average. In blue, the good news for the bulls is, is price did bounce at the 50-day moving average. The bad news is the 50-day does appear to be trying to roll over, similar to what we saw in the previous slide on the NASDAQ. Bullish implications, we've got the trend off of the November 2012 low, this blue line where the cursor is held. That's a good sign. The negative implication is this trend line here was previously broken. So we have potential resistance overhead in these areas here. We'll just see how it plays out next week. On this weekly chart of the S&P 500 index and the two charts that follow, these red vertical lines represent where the S&P 500 peaked. So this is a peak. This is a peak stock market peaks on a weekly basis, and 
going to peak here. This is the three week exponential moving average in blue here. The five week exponential moving average is shown in red. Under the most bullish conditions, you have the S&P 500 over both of the moving averages. The slope of the S&P 500 is positive, and the slope of the two moving averages is positive. Under the most bullish circumstances, blue remains above red. The inverse is true under the most bearish circumstances. S&P 500 below, blue below red the slope of all three turning downward. In the present day up here in the upper right hand corner you can see we do now have price below both moving averages. That's different than what we've seen during all of 2013. You can see the S&P 500 on a weekly basis stayed above the moving averages. Last week we closed below both red and blue. We also have the slope of the S&P 500 on a weekly basis pointing downward now and the slope of the blue moving average and the red moving average are both pointing down as well. From a price perspective, the S&P 500 on a weekly basis made a higher high two weeks ago. Last week it failed to make a lower low. So for the bears they'd like to see the S&P 500 close and make a lower low relative to this low next week. If we scroll down and look at indicators based on the weekly S&P 500 index. So the same chart here we've got S&P 500 weekly in black. This is CCI for the S&P 500 weekly. You can see last week we closed below 100 here after having a good run where CCI stayed above 100. You can see similar circumstances in the past. CCI above as price moves higher, closes below, the S&P 500 tended to be weak. Even in this instance where we had a good rally and then CCI closed below 100 on a weekly basis, the S&P 500 was able to rally for several months, but eventually Here's the point where you close below. All of these gains were retraced as the S&P 500 corrected back to this point here. CCI above, close below here on a weekly basis. A correction in the S&P 500 followed. Nice rally with CCI above, close below here. A correction in the S&P 500 followed. All things being equal, this is a crack in the bullish case and if you're a bear you'd like to see CCI come down in this direction. Using a similar approach here S&P 500 weekly this is the force index same concepts when you rally the force index tends to stay above the zero line over here on the right side when you get a weekly close below the zero line weakness in the S&P 500 followed bullish run above, weekly close below, weakness in the S&P 500 followed. Similar concepts here. The odds are in the bull's favor when the force index is clearly above zero, stocks do well. Once the force index drops below zero on a weekly basis, that's a closing weekly basis, the S&P 500 tended to consolidate or correct. Here you get a high probability run, force index above zero, closes below zero here, eventually the S&P 500 corrects. High probability run with the force index clearly above zero, you get a close below zero here, the S&P 500 corrected. Moving down, looking at RSI, typically when you get RSI moving into overbought territory, or above this 70 line on a weekly basis and then you get a weekly close below overbought that tends to be a negative for the S&P 500 here you close below 70 gains followed but eventually all of the gains from this point were retraced move down a little bit further 
Now we're looking at the true strength index, or TSI. When TSI experienced a bearish cross, which is black below red here, weakness in the S&P 500 followed on a weekly basis. Bearish cross, stocks corrected. Bearish cross, these gains eventually were retraced from the bearish cross. Bearish cross, TSI here, black below red, S&P 500 corrected. Bearish cross, correction. Last week, we experienced a bearish cross on TSI on a weekly closing basis, similar to this point here, 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 and here, where weakness in the S&P 500 eventually followed. Moving down to Williams percent R, similar concepts. You have Williams percent R clearly above negative 20 here, which is this upper band. This is your high probability move in stocks. You get a close below negative 20 here, correction followed. High probability move when you drop below Upside momentum is waning in stocks, and eventually all of this was retraced by the S&P 500. High probability move with momentum in the bull's favor. Stocks do well. You get a weekly close below negative 20, and a correction followed. High probability move here. Close below. Correction followed. High probability move that we've seen in 2013. Stocks have done well. This is the first time in 2013 we've seen Williams percent R significantly below negative 20, which looks similar to this point here, this point here, this point here, and this point here, where weakness eventually followed in the S&P 500 index. Very similar concepts here. We're looking at now risk on S&P 500 relative to risk off or shorting the S&P 500. This is what risk on looks like. This is what risk off looks like. So this is basically longs relative to shorts. You can see here we've got the ratio below both moving averages for the first time in 2013. And the slope of the blue moving average and the red moving average, the slopes are trying to roll over in a bearish manner similar to this point here. What we don't have, we don't have a bearish moving average crossover as we did here in late 2012. So the concepts from the last chart we looked at, which was a weekly version of the S&P 500, the same concepts apply here. These charts are marked up in a similar manner. See Williams percent R here for the ratio. So this is Williams percent R for the ratio of longs relative to shorts, close below negative 20. You can see historically here, when we've got a close below negative 20, stock market tended to correct or give up its gains. So this is concerning. If we come down here, you can make the same comment for the ultimate oscillator, all things being equal after you get a high probability run like this, and then a close on the ultimate oscillator for longs versus shorts below 70, the stock market has a tendency to either give up the gains or correct. We got a weekly close below 70 last week. Now we're looking at the true strength index for the ratio of longs to shorts. We have a bearish cross here black below red recent history when that's happened correction in the stock market this is the s p 500 weekly up here in black bearish cross correction bearish cross consolidation then correction cross correction cross correction if we come down and we look at rsi similar situation high probability run Historically, with RSI above 70, when you drop below 70, the odds of a correction increase. Below 70, odds of a correction increase. 
High probability run last week. We're now below 70, which looks similar to this period here and this period here. Coming down a little further, this is CCI, or the Commodity Channel Index for the ratio of longs to shorts. Same concept, high probability run in overbought territory. Above 100, stocks have a tendency to do well. When you have a weekly close below 100, as we did here, the odds of corrective activity in the stock market increase. Weekly close below, stocks corrected. Last week, we saw a weekly close below, all things being equal. That increases the odds of corrective activity in the stock market. We can go through this chart relatively quickly. It's the same concepts as the previous two charts. The first one we looked at was simply the S&P 500 weekly. Then we looked at the S&P 500 relative to shorts. So we looked at longs versus shorts. This is another weekly version of risk on versus risk off. This is stocks, the S&P 500, relative to the aggregate bond index or the AGG ETF. When the ratio, which is the dotted line, rises, stocks are in favor relative to bonds, and that's what risk on looks like. When the ratio falls, bonds are in greater demand relative to stocks, and this is what risk off looks like. The most bullish conditions have the ratio above, the blue moving average above the red, with the slopes of all of them pointing upward. This is what risk off looks like. It's the inverse of that ratio below the two moving averages, blue below red, and the slopes all pointing down. You can see as of the close on Friday, April 19th, we have somewhat of a mixed bag, but it seems to be rolling over. We have the ratio below both moving averages. That's the second time that's happened in 2013. Here's the rally off of the November 2012 low, and from this point forward, the ratio stayed above the moving averages and blue stayed above red. As of the close on Friday, blue is kissing red. They're both at 14.08 here. So this is a vulnerable looking ratio. It has not made a lower low yet. From a bearish perspective, the bears would like to see this ratio make a lower low. Now let's look at the indicators. Similar situation to what we looked at in the previous two. The most advantageous or high probability bullish conditions are when CCI for the ratio of stocks relative to bonds stays in overbought territory like this, stocks do well. This is the S&P 500 weekly here in black. Once you drop below CCI 100, the odds of a stock market correction increase. Drop below 100, odds of a correction increase. CCI for the ratio of stocks relative to bonds drops below here, odds of a correction increase. So you can see last week we closed clearly below the 100 level here and this CCI for the ratio of stocks relative to bonds looks vulnerable as it did here, 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 and here where corrections in the stock market followed. Now we're looking at the force index here where I'm moving the cursor. This is the force index for stocks relative to bonds. This is your high probability move in stocks. This is the S&P 500. Once the force index drops below, the odds of a correction increase. High probability move drops below, odds of a correction increase. High probability bullish move drops below, the odds start to deteriorate. Eventually, all of these gains are erased here in the S&P 500 weekly. High probability move, force index drops below, the odds of bullish outcomes start to decrease. Eventually, a correction follows, drops below after a move above correction. Last week, we dropped below on the force index. This is the force index for stocks relative to bonds closed at negative 94 here, which looks similar to this, 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 
this and this, where corrections in the stock market eventually ensued. MACD, we're looking at MACD for the ratio of stocks relative to bonds. When you've got a bearish cross here, 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 and here, eventually corrections in the stock market followed, consolidation, correction after the bearish cross, bearish cross, correction, bearish cross for MACD for the ratio of stocks to bonds. So these indicators are on the ratio of stocks relative to bonds, and this is what the S&P 500 did. Last week, you can see black is moving below red. This is a bearish cross as of the close that looks similar to this point here, 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 and here, where weakness in the stock market followed. Scrolling down a little bit further, now we're looking at RSI. Here you can just see that RSI for the ratio of stocks relative to bonds is making a series of lower highs and lower lows. This looks vulnerable here, which is similar to this point here and here where corrections in the stock market followed. Scrolling down, similar concepts. Williams percent R looks at the bullish momentum for stocks relative to bonds. Bad things tend to happen when you close below the upper band, which is negative 20. Close below, bad things. Close below, close below, eventually bad things. Close below, bad things happen in stocks. Weekly close below, weekly close below, eventually a correction. This week, we clearly had a weekly close below, which increases the odds or probability of corrective activity in stocks. We look at full stochastic, where are we now? We've got full stochastic for the ratio of stocks relative to bonds falling. We've got a bearish cross, black below red, and we're approaching 80. So let's see what happened in similar circumstances when we were approaching 80. Approaching 80 here, stocks corrected. Approaching 80 here, stocks corrected. Close to the 80 bar, our horizontal line here, Eventually, a correction followed. Very close to 80 here, stocks corrected. Close to 80 here, stocks corrected. Looks vulnerable here. This is the true strength index for the ratio of stocks. Relative to bonds, you get a bearish cross, black below red, correction. Bearish cross for the ratio, TSI, of stocks relative to bonds. Stock market here in black corrected, bearish cross, eventually bad things happened, all of these gains were given back, bearish cross and TSI, correction followed, bearish cross, correction. This week we have a bearish cross, which increases the odds of further corrective activity in the stock market. Here you have the ultimate oscillator above 70, Drops below, it tells you that your bullish momentum is waning. Drops below, drops below. Eventually, all of these gains, this is the S&P 500 here, were retraced here. This is your high probability move in overbought territory. Stock market does well. Once we get a close below, the odds of a correction increase. High probability move, stocks do well, get a close below. Odds of a correction increase. High probability move in 2013. This is the ultimate oscillator for the ratio of stocks to bonds. Stocks do well. Last week we got a close below 70 on the ultimate oscillator, which looks similar to this period here and this period here, where corrective activity in the stock market followed. This is a chart that we've looked at several times in the past. This is the S&P 500 weekly relative to the VIX. So this is risk on relative to risk off when the ratio of the dotted line is rising. Here's the S&P 500. That's what risk on looks like. Ratio dotted line falls. That's what risk off looks like. See this week after the close on Friday, April 19th, PPO, which is a lot like MACD experienced a bearish cross, black below red. Here's the last two times we had it. Here's a bearish cross here, 
Eventually the S&P 500 corrects. Black below red here, S&P 500 corrects. Also on the ratio itself, the moving average is EMA 6 relative to the simple moving average 12 on a weekly basis. You get blue below red here, bearish cross, eventually stocks correct. Blue, bearish cross, below red, moving average, stocks correct. This week we have a similar bearish cross where blue closed below red. All things being equal, this chart is leaning towards the correction end of the spectrum. This, as well as this, increase the odds of further weakness in the coming weeks. This is a weekly chart of IWM, the Russell 2000 small cap ETF. You can see here, this is a weekly upward sloping trend line that was broken here after the break. Now, this week we made a lower low. So you have step one, break of a trend line. Then you've got a lower high relative to this high, and now we've made a lower low. All things being equal, this is negative for small cap stocks, as well as risk in general. We have Williams percent R weekly for IWM, closing below negative 50. You also have IWM on a weekly basis experiencing a bearish MACD cross, similar to this point here and here where corrective activity in the stock market followed. There's a weekly chart of the Basic Materials ETF, IYM, which is very similar to XLB. Point of the exercise, from a bullish perspective, we've held these weekly trend lines, so it's possible that we could see a bounce here. From a bearish perspective, we have for IYM on a weekly chart, a bearish MACD cross here. This is the stock market consolidation correction. Bearish MACD cross for IYM. Stocks go sideways to down. Bearish MACD cross correction. We have a bearish MACD cross again for IYM weekly. This is another look at risk on versus risk off. SPY relative to AGG, the aggregate bond index. This is somewhat of a close up view of a weekly chart. Two weeks ago we made a higher high here which appeared to be bullish. Last week we broke this upward sloping trend line here in a bearish manner. The stock market bears would like to see this ratio make a lower low which it has not done yet. They would also like to see this blue moving average move below the red which has not happened either. We do have the moving averages starting to roll over and we do have the ratio below both moving averages. This is somewhat of a mixed bag. The lower low would be a good sign for stock market bears. Quick update to a chart we've reviewed several times over the past few weeks. This is SPY risk on relative to IEF intermediate treasuries risk off. Point of the exercise, the ratio here closed at the exact same level that it closed at back on January 28th, which says stocks, SPY, relative to intermediate term treasuries, stocks versus bonds has been a draw since January 28th. And that tells you that bullish or risk on momentum is waning. Here you can see you had a bearish PPO cross, and if I come down, stocks corrected. Bearish PPO cross for the ratio, if I come down, stocks corrected here where the cursor is. This week we saw another bearish PPO cross for the ratio of SPY relative to IEF. From a potentially bullish or bounce perspective, you can see the ratio bounced here at this blue line. This same blue line acted as resistance here. If I follow this blue line up, it seems to be acting as support. So in terms of where we go next, it's possible we get a bounce, or if we break in this direction, obviously that would favor the stock market bears. We'll keep an open mind as long as this blue line holds in the short run.
The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.